began to study Tantra, which tantric monastery did you decide to attend? And at that point, were you already a Geshe La Rampa? Actually, uh, 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 yeah. To learn about Tantra, I went to a tantric monastery or tantric college called Gyuto for one year. So there are two monasteries, Gyuto and Gyume. And so you can only enter into these monasteries after you've become a, be a Geshe La Rampa. So in 2001, I became a Geshe La Rampa. And I went to the Great Prayer Festival at Budgaya. There I received the title of Geshe La Rampa. This is the first of the class from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In the monastery such as Sarah, there are many, there are many monks, and so it takes at least 19 or 20 years before becoming a Geshe La Rampa. And before becoming a Geshe La Rampa, there are other studies that last six years. And so at that time you learn different things and you give exams. So f uh, these are regarding the Bodhisattva Charyavatara and poetic literature. And after finishing this, I became a Geshe La Rampa and I entered into Gyuto Monastery. I stayed there for one year and studied Tantra. And I was also teaching philosophy to the monks. So from the time that I arrived at Sarah, for the first ten years, I I was continuing. I continued the studies of Madhyamika until I arrived here, and I was uh, also able to teach philosophy to the other so who initially requested you to come to teach in the West? And we'd like to know what your f what was your, your first reaction to this request? And were you told immediately that this destination was Institute Lamanson Kappa? Now, before that, had you ever been to the West? After I became a Geshe, I began, I began teaching full-time at Sarah, and I have many students there. At that time, at a certain point, somebody asked me to go to Taiwan, to Taiwan, and to teach in one of the centers there, one of Lama Tsopa Rinpoche's centers. So I spoke with Chodun Rinpoche, and he told me that it would have been better if I remained at Sarah to teach at that time, because that would have been more beneficial, and so I didn't go to Taiwan. <laughs> So I didn't have any intention of coming to the West to teach. I thought I would only stay at Sarah and, and teach there. And following that, after I became a Geshe La Rampa, there's a particular type of study that lasts three years in order to become a teacher, and so I did that at Sarah. And as soon as I'd finished that, one of the Geshe's came to 
to meet me, and he had been sent by he had been sent by Lama Zoparipushi from Kopan. <laughs> And he told me that Kensun Jaba Tekchok was not feeling, was not in good health at Instituto Lama Tsongkhapa, and so they didn't have anybody to teach the tantric subjects. And since this is one of the most important centers, and Lama Zopa Rinpoche did a divination, and and uh, and I was told that I had come out the best, so so he requested me to come to the West and teach, and so this is how I ended up coming here. So again, I went to Chodun Rinpoche to talk to him about this. And Rinpoche told me that in general, if you stay at Sarah to teach, it's, it's of great benefit. But if Lama Zopa Rinpoche uh, asked you to do this, then it's not good to, to go against his wishes. He said that Lama Zopa Rinpoche was, was doing incredible activities for the Dharma in the whole world and is extremely kind. And therefore, if Lama Zopa Rinpoche asks you to go, it's not good to, to say no. So I also talked with other people and they told me that, that, this, that this institute was one of Lama Tsopa uh, best centers also from the point of view of education in Sutra and Tantra and also regarding the study of Tantra. Because at, at Sera, we study, we just study the five treatises of Maitreya, we study, we study them very well we don't study Tantra. And so I was very happy to hear that, that here there was this uh, desire to study Tantra and to receive teachings on Tantra. So this was, this was an added motivation for me to, to accept this invitation. And so I also thought that now I'll have an opportunity to study, to teach Tantra and also to learn other languages. Lama Zopa Rinpoche helps all three of the great monasteries, Sera, Drepung, and Ganden, and also the various types of ex exams and the different, the different uh, occasions and so forth. Uh, both the FPMT and Lama Zopa Rinpoche give support for all of these di different activities. For example, all of the food at Sera J is completely sponsored by Lama Zopa Rinpoche. So as far as the FPMT and Lama Zopa Rinpoche, they always helped me to study. And because of that, once I, after having the opportunity to study and becoming a Geshe, since this was due to the kindness of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, it, w it wouldn't have been uh, appropriate to refuse his request at all. And this is also the first time I've come to the West. So, uh, the main reason for my coming here was because of Lama Zopa Rinpoche's request. Up to now, what has been your impression of the Western culture that you've experienced, and what differences do you see between Western and Tibetan students of Buddhism? As soon as I arrived here, what did I experience? I come from India. I came here from India. 
So you know that in India, India is not very clean. It's not as clean as the West. And also the infrastructure. Here, I noticed that it was much better. It was much better than the Indian infrastructure. So I immediately saw that I had arrived in a place where all the conditions are present. So I was uh, I was quite happy immediately. As far as the difference between Western and Tibetan students. Up until now, since I don't understand the language well, it's not that I've spoken with so many students. But my first impression is that many Tibetan students, they're very good, but I've seen that during teachings, Western students seem to pay more attention. They put more energy into listening to the teachings. I see that they take notes because from the time that they're young they've they've been used to studying and going to school and so the way that they study is somewhat different from how Tibetans study they write things down they take notes and they ask questions with a lot of energy and interest they're different from Tibetans who don't take notes and don't uh, do these kinds of uh, activities. But in the monastery, one, when we teach the texts, we put the, the main emphasis is on the meaning of the text. Western students, on the other hand, it would be difficult to study in the same way that the Tibetans study in the monasteries. So the Tibetans do put more emphasis on the meaning, while Western students put less emphasis on it. Mm. Because they don't speak Tibetan language, they don't uh, know Tibetan literature, so it becomes difficult to study in the same way that Tibetans do. They're more interested, and it's easier for them to. It's more. It's easier for them to understand things on the basis of a literal word-for-word -word explanation. And observing Westerners, they seem to me to be fairly happy and, uh, and relaxed in general. But when I talk to them, when I talk to them, it seems that some of them have a lot of mental problems, a lot of mental suffering. While on the other hand, Tibetans and Asians, especially Tibetans, it's not that they don't have mental difficulties, but they don't have this constant difficulty like not being able to sleep, depression, and mental anxiety. They have a lot less of these kinds of problems. So this depends a little bit on the culture and on the habits because they're different. But this also depends. This depends on the fact that there's so much emphasis on study from when you're young. And so this emphasis can create mental fatigue 
and it can also create more mental problems. This is so. This is how I think it is. This is what I thought. What do you think of study programs such as the basic program and the master's program? And what differences have you noticed between the way of teaching Dharma in the West and the methods used in the monasteries? In general, I think it's ex excellent that here at Instituto Lama Tsongkhapa that we have the basic program and the master's program. My idea is that some things need to be changed in, in these programs. For example, in Tibet, there was a great spread of the Dharma in general. And the main reason that it spread in this way is because many Tibetans at the beginning went to India, they went to Nalanda, they learned the language, they studied it, and they translated it. They translated the Dharma completely into the Tibetan language. And so in Tibet, there was a complete freedom of study because it was all translated into, into Tibetan. And so because of this, the Dharma spread in a very deep way in society. So in general, in the West, it's good to know Tibetan, but even even if you don't know Tibetan, it's good. It's important that that the Dharma is translated into the language of that place. For example, in Italy, if all of the Dharma were translated into into Italian there wouldn't be any difficulty for Italians to study the Dharma because it would already exist in their language. But in fact, it's difficult because very few people know Tibetan and for the most part, this is a problem. So each, each country needs to be able to translate the Dharma into their own languages, to know, have translators who can translate into those languages and to translate the teachings into their language. This is very important. <laughs> che giorni sono lunghi che che è tutto che giorni che ci hanno bucciato adesso